we used Riemann sums in approximating the area under the curve given a function. Now for today we're going to use the Riemann sums method. In this case, I'm going to use it to measure the distance traveled by a moving object given the time in seconds and its velocity. Now in this particular object, the object is traveling from 0 seconds up until 25 seconds and we recorded the velocity or the change of velocity of that object moving from 0 to 25 seconds. Now, to use the lower estimate for this particular word problem, we're going to use Riemann sums or the application of Riemann sums in estimating the distance traveled by this moving object. So if you graph your table into an xy plane where time is your x-axis and your velocity is your y-axis, you will notice that our velocity is increasing as time is increasing. So in this case, at each endpoint, we can construct a rectangle. Now, our rectangle has a consistent width because if you'll notice from our time interval, the time interval is consistent, consistent at 5 seconds. So we can have a width of 5 seconds in our approximated rectangles. Now, since it's the lower estimate, it means that we're going to start at the lowest endpoint of our graph. And in our graph, the lowest endpoint starts at 20. So this is basically your length if you're going to apply it into um, the area of a rectangle. So at 20, we are going to start from point 20 moving to the right. And we'll have 20 for our first rectangle. Now add it up to 23, which is the second length of your rectangle using the lower estimate. The third lower estimated value will be at 41 and then 43 and then at 48. Now we're not going to use 52 meters per second because it's not going to cover the last few seconds of this particular object moving from 0 to 25. So since it's the lower estimate, we're just going to use 20, 23, 41, 43, and 48 and add them all up multiply by its consistent width of 5 seconds and you'll have your lower estimated value of the distance traveled by this object which is at 875 feet. So this is how we use Riemann sums in approximating the distance traveled by a moving object given its time and its velocity. Now if we have the lower estimate we also have the upper estimate. And to show you the upper estimated value of this moving object, I'm going to use the same table, but this time instead of starting from um, 0 to 5, I'm going to start at 5 going backwards. And that's how I'm going to use my upper estimated value for the distance traveled by the object. So I'm using the same table. And now I'm going to use the upper estimate. So as I've mentioned, I'm not going to start at zero, but this time I'm going to the upper estimated value of my rectangle, which is at five seconds. So I'm still going to use five as my interval because it's still consistent because I'm still using the same table of values. But this time I'm not going to start at 20. I'm now starting at 23. And I'm going to move on to 41 and then 43, 48, and the last number that I'm going to use is going to be 52. And if you will notice at the graph, we're using the upper estimated value because on our rectangle, we're using the higher point on our area. So to add them all up, so you'll have 23 plus 41 plus 43 plus 48 plus 52 multiplied by 5 because the time interval is consistent in our given problem, we'll have... 1035 meters. So this is going to be the estimated distance traveled by the object using the upper estimate. So for the lower estimate, we have 875 feet, I mean, it's supposed to be meter, and then for uh, the upper estimate will be 1035 meters. Now we're going to uh, have a different example and this time I'm not going to show you the graph anymore we're just going to rely on our table and the time interval that I'm going to show on my next example will no longer be consistent so this is my second example the object is still moving and we have here from 0 through 30 seconds now the velocities is also recorded we have 30 28, and then 25, 22, and then 24. Now, if you'll notice, 
the time interval is inconsistent and the velocity is also inconsistent so at 30 it went down to 28 it went down to 25 went down to 22 and then it went up again at 24. now how are we going to use Riemann's terms in estimating the distance traveled by this object so i'm not going to show you the graph anymore we're just going to use the concept that we learned from the previous example and for finding the lower estimated distance traveled by this motorcycle from 0 seconds to 30 seconds I'm going to start at my lowest end point which is at 30 and at 30 the interval is from 0 to 10 so I have a width of 10 for this particular if you're going to visualize that rectangle you will have 30 times 10 and this 10 right here is basically the width or the time interval of your first rectangle now on the second rectangle we're gonna start at 28 and the distance or the time interval for 28 will now be 5 because the interval now is from 10 to 15 so we have a 5 interval or a 5 second interval so we'll multiply it with 28 and then with 25 we have 8 for its time interval and at 22 the interval is at 7 so once again since it's the lower estimate we're not going to use the last number right here because it's not going to cover the lower end point of the rectangle for the previous for the next time interval so we have 30 times 10 which is 300 28 times 5 which is 140 25 and 28 which is 200 and 22 times 7 which is 154 so the lower estimated distance of the motorcycle traveling from 0 to 30 seconds is 794 feet. Now, since we have the lower estimate, let's try to see how it will change if we use the upper estimate. Will this be a lower value for the upper estimate or a higher value for the upper estimate? So, we'll soon find out. So I'm going to use the same table. Now I'm using the upper estimate, so I'm not going to start at 30 anymore. This time I'm going to start at 28. However, the time interval is still the same, which is at 10 seconds. So that's still going to be my width if I'm uh, visualizing a rectangle or the area of the rectangle. And the second interval, I'll have to use the 25, or that, that will be my next endpoint, and the distance or the time interval for this velocity is at 5 and then I'm going to use 22 and its interval from 23 to 15 is 8 and the last value right here that I'm going to use is 24 and its time interval is from 30 to 23 so I have 7 now multiply them and simplify your equation and the distance traveled by this moving or by the motorcycle from 0 seconds to 30 seconds is now 749 feet. So notice that in this particular example, the lower estimate has a higher estimated uh, distance traveled compared to the upper estimate. And the reason is that we have an inconsistent time interval and inconsistent velocity in our moving object. So not all lower estimate will give you a lower um, estimated distance in this moving object because if you'll notice if it's inconsistent it's going to be different now in our example previously we used trapezoid method in um, estimating the area under the curve now how are we going to apply the trapezoid method to find the distance traveled of a moving object using the same table so that will be my last example for this table and I'm using the trapezoid method to show you the estimated distance traveled by this motorcycle. So a trapezoid method, the formula is half of length 1 plus length 2 and then multiply by its width. Now in this case, we're using half of the first endpoint and then the second endpoint multiplied by the time interval. So my first set will be 1 half of 28 plus 30 times the, dis, um, the time interval at 10 seconds. So that's my first set of estimated value using the trapezoid method. The second set of value will be at 1 half of 28 plus 25 with a time interval of 15, I mean 5. And then uh, the next set, I'll have half of 
25 and 22 multiplied by 8, which is my time interval between 15 and 23, added to my last set, which is 1 half of 22 plus 24, with an interval of 7. Now just simplify your equation. In, your, in the trapezoid method, the distance traveled by the motorcycle is now 771.5 feet. And that's how we use the Riemann sums method in approximating the distance traveled of a moving object using the trapezoid method, proper estimate and overestimate.